Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name's Caleb. In today's episode, I'm going to build a control system for my new CNC router. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. The problem that I have is twofold. First, the control computer that controls a CNC machine is about 10 or 15 steps away from the machine itself. And while that's not too far, it becomes a problem when I'm trying to line up the cut head with the corner of my work. And the second problem is that the computer orientation is perpendicular to the orientation of the CNC machine. And all the buttons, the arrow keys, when I'm trying to jog, get all kind of mixed up. And I got used to that, but still the biggest problem is that I can't tell where the cut head is because I'm too far away from it. The original plan was to build a handheld pendant that I could connect to the control computer via USB or something like that. I could then carry that over to the CNC machine and have all my capabilities for jogging and everything right there. That would solve one of the problems. The other thing I wanted to add was some information readout on the pendant itself. Mach 4 comes with a bunch of different plugins, and I started looking through them to see which one of those would allow me to do bi-directional communication like that. I started mucking with the Lua plugin because I could write software and just do that, but it turned out I would probably have to use two Arduinos, one for display and one for sending the keystrokes back to the machine, and it got a little too complicated and didn't quite work the way I wanted it to once I got into it. The other plugin that looked promising was Modbus. I've never used Modbus before, so I started digging into that to see if I could learn how to use that in a day or two, and it turns out it's a little more complicated than that. So I set that aside and started thinking about how to solve this problem. If the main goal was to have jog control and information at the CNC machine, maybe I should just move the entire terminal over to the CNC machine. I could then put all my jog buttons and rotary encoder and everything right into that unit and that would solve all of my problems. So I started sketching and that's exactly what we're gonna build today. I'm using the Arduino Nano IoT33 microcontroller for this project, mainly because it has the SAMD processor and that can emulate a keyboard. That's really the only feature that I need, so it's perfect. I found a 60 millimeter rotary encoder for super fine control of the cut head. I should be able to bind each pulse to a keystroke and then set the incremental jog step on the touchscreen. This toggle switch will act as an arming switch, so I can arm and disarm the entire system. That way I won't inadvertently bump the encoder or a button while the machine is running. I'm also adding an RGB LED to the top so that I have a visual if it is armed or not. Again with my favorite buttons. These are the ITW59 series push button switches. These will control forward, backward, left, right, up and down. I'll use this four position rotary switch to select which axis the rotary encoder operates. I only have three axes on the machine right now, but there is an option for a rotary table that I could add in the future. This is a 10 inch capacitive touchscreen display. It's got HDMI outputs and it's powered by USB, so it's perfect for this application. Believe it or not, this keyboard was kind of hard to find. Apparently, a small keyboard with an integrated touchpad on it is pretty rare. They're about four times the cost of this wireless one that I picked up for pretty cheap. I'm going to make the case out of acrylic and wood. I'll use a CNC router for the wood parts, the laser cutter for the acrylic parts, and there's a few 3D printed parts that will hold the monitor onto the acrylic. I have an old monitor arm that this will attach to that will mount onto the CNC router itself, and I'll probably need to make a bracket for that. The code for this project is pretty simple. I'm using the keyboard.h library on an Arduino Nano IoT33 to emulate a keyboard. If you're interested in this code or you want to take a look at it or contribute in any way, don't forget that there will be a link to GitHub on the Element 14 community project page for this project. Hi, I'm David from Element 14's The Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics, and even some new releases just to find out what's inside.
As usual, I start by placing all of my electronic components kind of where I want them, and then I build around that. I've got the 10 inch touch screen here, all the ITW switches, the rotary switch, the encoder, and the toggle switch to arm and disarm the system. On the back, I've got the Nano IoT 33, which will attach to the back of the touch screen. To hold most of this in place, I have a faceplate made out of three millimeter acrylic, and these black pieces here are the 3D printed brackets that will hold the touchscreen to the acrylic. The sides are going to be made out of oak and the switch is kind of embedded into that. I needed a keyboard tray to hold the keyboard. That's going to be made out of some small quarter inch pieces of wood that I have. To hold it all together, I routed out these channels for half inch plywood and I'm going to screw that into the side instead of glue it so I can get it apart when I need to do maintenance on it. There's one more piece of acrylic at the top, which has a little hole right here for the LED that will tell me if the system is armed or disarmed. All right, now we have the idea, the parts, and the design. Let's get to building. All right, it is done and everything works. That is just the way I like it. I've got the encoder wheel here, the rotary switch, and all of the jog buttons. We've got forward, backward, left, right, Z-axis down, and Z-axis up. With the rotary switch, I can change which axis this controls. On the jog buttons, if I push a button, it'll move the cut head just a little bit to one way. If I hold it down, it travels till I let go. On the encoder, I have it set over here. I can change the incremental jog step. It's set for a hundredth of an inch and it is in the X position, I believe. It moves the cut head ever so slightly unless I keep going with it. Change that to Y. And finally, Z. We also have the arming switch here on the side. Got a red LED, which means everything works. It is not safe for red. Flip that up, that LED changes to blue, and it's safe. None of these controls work anymore. Flip it back on, and we've got jog movement again. The keyboard works just fine. It's just a basic keyboard, but I've got a little trackpad here so I can do some fine stuff. And the screen is a touch screen, so I can run some of these operations here with my finger. 
I can run auto Z touch plate, cycle the, the start and load G code and do everything that I need to do on the screen with a touch. Well, that's all we have for today. I'm really pleased with the way that this thing turned out. It was a lot of fun to build too. I got to do some welding, laser cutting, use a CNC router, some woodworking and electronics. So ton of fun to build this one. What would you have done differently? Do you know a way to have Mach 4 CNC control software have bi-directional communication with an Arduino? If you do, let us know at the Element 14 community at element14.com slash presents. We'll see you next time, and until then, keep making.